Hi, I'm Vinay Opal and I'm back with episode number 6 from the prediction series. I have formulated a very unique question based on the Veritasium video on hydrodynamic levitation. The link to the video is in the description. Do have a look at the Veritasium video. So let's have a read of the question. A thin stream of water strikes the base of a spherical ball with speed 5 meter per second. The force of water balances the weight of the sphere and maintains it in equilibrium as shown in the figure. So this water jet is keeping this ball in equilibrium. The figure is in the vertical plane. Assume the water flow to be laminar and that the water splashes out horizontally and symmetrically in all directions after striking the sphere without affecting the stream. So, as shown here, the water strikes the base of the sphere and splashes out horizontally and symmetrically in all directions. Ignore any wetting of the sphere. If the sphere is slightly pushed vertically down and released, compute the angular frequency of its oscillations. An acceleration due to gravity is given 10 meter per second. So, we need to calculate the angular frequency of small oscillations. So, we are expecting that the sphere is going to perform SHM. One thing that you should realize is why, why it will oscillate is because the speed of the water as we travel up, the speed decreases. So, as the ball is pushed down, the speed of the water striking the base, it is uh, increasing and therefore it will apply a larger force compared to gravity and push it back up. So, let us have a look at the solution. Firstly, let us try to write the force that the water will apply. Volume flow rate should be uh, familiar to everyone who studied fluid mechanics is equal to area of the stream times the velocity and that is a constant because we are going to assume water is incompressible. In JE, always, always, always assume any liquid to be incompressible unless they state otherwise. So, even if they don't say anything, we are, we, then we have simply have to assume that the liquid is incompressible. And that means that the volume flow rate is a constant. So, as you can see in this diagram, the question said that the water is splashing out symmetrically and horizontally in all directions. So, the final momentum vector of water would be zero and therefore the change in momentum will simply be the initial momentum that the uh, momentum incident on the uh, sphere. So, the force will be simply the incident momentum per second which I can write it as I already know volume flowing per unit time is area into velocity. So, the mass flowing per unit time would be density into area into velocity and if I multiply that by velocity again I will get the momentum per unit time. So, which is nothing but the force. So, rho a v squared will be my force and in equilibrium rho a v squared is going to be balancing out the gravity. So, this is my equilibrium equation. Now, let us look at what happens if you push the sphere downwards. So, one thing where I expect a lot of you to go wrong is not recognizing that the area of the water jet is going to change it is not going to be a constant. Once again, because area into velocity is constant and as we go up, velocity is going to decrease because of uh, gravity and therefore, the area of the jet is going to increase. So, if you considered the force to be rho a v squared and then you only took the variation in v squared, assuming rho a is constant, you will get the wrong answer. You will get the wrong answer by a factor of root 2. So, let us have a look at the correct solution. The force by the water, I can, I, so what I am going to do is I am going to write rho a v squared as rho a v times v and the reason I am writing this is because rho a v is a constant. So, here what is v? v is the speed with which the water is striking. So, the area a is the cross sectional area of the water jet at the point of striking the sphere. Now, suppose I displace the sphere downwards by a small displacement phi, the speed of the water when you displace uh, the sphere downward by phi, the speed of the water striking the sphere is going to be v square plus 2 g y square root of that. This is simply a free fall equation and therefore, my force equation will be rho a v times root of v square plus 2 g y. Rho a v is a constant minus m g. So, uh, I am going to use the equilibrium equation that we had found out that rho a v squared is mg. So, I am going to substitute rho a v 
as mg by v and then this will be my equation and you can see that um, if I take this velocity inside the square root I will get uh, 1 plus 2 g by, by v squared the whole raised to half. Now in questions where they ask you to calculate the angular frequency or the time period of small oscillations or when the question uses phrases like the object is slightly pushed then there is a very good chance that you will be expected to do some sort of binomial approximation or maybe uh, the approximation of trigonometric functions like sin theta is approximately theta some something of that sort. So you should expect that there will be some approximation that you will have to use in this case it will be the binomial approximation. So um, you performing binomial approximation here I will get 1, 1 plus half times 2 g y by v squared minus 1 this expression here and the ones get cancelled out and we are left with a force that is proportional to y and thereby resulting in SHM for small oscillations. So my the k equivalent would be the proportionality to y so mg squared by v square and then I already know omega s root k equivalent by m the standard SHM equation and I get omega s that will give you g by v which will give you 2 radian per second. So those of you who fail to recognize that the area is varying and you only took the variation in v squared while keeping area as constant you would have gotten the uh, omega as 2 root 2. Hope you guys have understood the solution. I want to talk a bit about what uh, the Veritasium video shows and how it's actually different from uh, what we just solved. If you watch the Veritasium video and you should, you will see that the jet stream strikes not at the base but uh, off center at some distance from the center. So let's say it strikes at some distance t. Now if uh, if you look at the video you will see that the sphere or the disc is pretty much in equilibrium it's oscillating a little bit but uh, more or less it is oscillating about some equilibrium position so if we assume equilibrium and let's say i want to calculate angular acceleration so this is another question that can be framed the force by the water is simply going to bal balance out the gravity it's going to be mg and therefore if you want to calculate the angular acceleration you will have mg times d is equal to i alpha. You can just substitute i whether it is a disc or a sphere and this is how you will get the angular acceleration. Now another point that is different from our problem is that I assume that the water simply splashes off and there is no wetting of the sphere or of the uh, disc. However in the video this is very clearly there is some water that is splashing out here and then there is some addition between the water and the sphere so which is what uh, the qu question that i had framed asked you to neglect so in my opinion what is uh, actually going to happen is there is because of this water that is forming a layer on the sphere there is going to be some viscous force and the viscous forces are going to be applying an anti clockwise Arc on the sphere. So there is a force by the water strike which is striking the sphere and there is a uh, which is a, which will apply a torque in the clockwise sense and there is a viscous force on uh, or even uh, maybe the surface tension or the adhesion force that is applying an anti-clockwise torque on the sphere without actually writing any equations. What I suspect is that the viscous force will be proportional to the angular velocity of the ball there will be some dependence and eventually there will be a terminal angular velocity reached. So you will have some equation of this sort mg into d minus um, some, some torque which is proportional to omega, k okay, is some constant of proportionality and eventually there will be some terminal velocity reached. So the net uh, torque should be 0 and you will get this terminal angular velocity. Now what this proportionality uh, would be is uh, I don't think it's uh, in JE syllabus. Um, I don't think we can actually frame a question in JE syllabus. So what I did was um, modify the actual situation so that we can get a question within the framework for JE advanced. So hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the prediction series. That's it for today. See you guys. Good night.